Well, tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of you going to be just sick into your stomach. A lot of you are suffering right now with the migrant crisis. And there is a program that Joe Biden had, and we talked about this a little bit before, but Republican states tried to stop this particular program. And as you see on the screen, a judge upholds a program that allows 30,000 migrants from four countries into the United States each month, not each year, not every six months, not every three months, every single month. Okay, so let's get into this. The Biden administration can keep operating a program that allows a limited number of migrants from four countries in the United States on humanitarian grounds after a federal judge on Friday dismissed a challenge from Republican led states. U.S. District Judge Drew B. Tipton said Texas and 20 other states had not shown they have suffered financial harm because of the humanitarian parole program. That allows up to 30,000 asylum seekers into the United States each month from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela combined. They said that was something the states needed to prove to have legal standing to bring the lawsuit. They said in reaching the conclusion, they said the court does not address the lawfulness of the program. The judge wrote that eliminating the program would undercut a broader policy that seeks to encourage migrants to use the Biden administration's preferred pathways into the U S or face stiff consequences. Now the States led by Texas had argued the program is forcing them to spend millions on healthcare, education and public safety for the migrants. It's the attorney working with the Texas attorney general's office is in the legal challenge said that the program created a shadow immigration system. It's the advocates that say for the federal program countered that migrants admitted through the policy helped with a U.S farm labor shortage. Now they said the white house welcomed the ruling. Of course you welcome the ruling. Of course. They say the district court's decision is based on the success of the programs. They, which has expanded lawful pathways for nationals from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela who have a sponsor in this country and pass our rigorous vetting process while dramatically decreasing the number of nationals from those countries crossing our Southern border. Now white house spokesperson, Angelo Fernandez, Hernandez, boy, that's an interesting name. It say the Texas attorney general's office did not immediately reply to messages seeking comment. They say an appeal by Texas and the other states seem likely, of course they're going to appeal. You know that as they since the program was launched in the fall of 2022, more than 357,000 people from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela have been granted parole and allowed to enter the country through January. They say Haitians have been the biggest group to use the program with 138,000 people from that country arriving, followed by 86,000 Venezuelans, 74,000 Cubans, and 58,000 Nicaraguans. Migrants must apply online, arrive at an airport, and have a financial sponsor in the U.S., and if approved, they can stay for two years and get a work permit. President Joe Biden has made an unprecedented use of parole authority, which has been in effect since 1952 and allows presidents to let people in for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit. Now they say that he's done this in an unprecedented way. Okay. So in other words, no other president has done this like him. Now Esther song, they say an attorney for justice action center is it was represented Seven people who were sponsoring migrants as part of the program says she was looking forward to calling her clients to let them know of the court's decision. It say, and I quote, it's a popular program. People want to welcome other people to this country. And uh, Valerie Leveus, it say one of the seven represented by the Justice Action Center, sponsored her brother and nephew, and they arrived in Florida from conflict plague Haiti last August. And she said they are flourishing in their new lives. You say, and her nephew has a newfound normalcy and is able to do things like play basketball outdoors without having to worry about safety. You say, her brother is working in construction. Now, I've said this before that the only people really out of the list that have an asylum claim would be Haitians right now. Definitely what you see is going on in Haiti today. And we know the reason why Haiti is like that is because of the United States and the other Western powers. Now, Biden has been flying people in the whole time, but yet saying Greg Abbott is the one that's dropping everybody off in the cities. 
and we supposed to come out and vote for Biden in 2024. Now let's go look at a video real quick from our great brother, Tony Brown from 1984. Let's, let's hear what our brother would say to us in 2024. The Democratic Party at some point in time has to be shaken out of its racist attitudes. And it has to be during one of these four year periods shown that it did not get the black vote. And because it didn't get the black vote, it didn't win the presidency. When that happens, it will change. I don't see any hope of the, of the Republican Party embracing a black agenda at all. As you heard, our brother from about 40 years ago or so had told they said it, we must shake up the Democrat party and make them lose a presidential election for them to really get it. Basically he continued to say he didn't see any hope at that time in 1984 in the Republican party because the Republican party was not embracing the black community back in 1984 whatsoever. We are just going to be honest about that. The Republican party has not a good, did any kind of good job with reaching out to black America unless you was a black American who was bootlicking and shoe shining, right? But today, as you see Trump trying to reach out a little bit to the black community and maybe they should build on that and do something for black people. Cause I said this and most black people say this, if the Republican party get a black agenda to help our black Americans, the Democrat party is done because a lot of people in the black community today in 2024 are sickened by what Biden and the Democrats has done. If you live in Chicago, hearing this kind of news sickens you. If you live in New York, this, this kind of news sickens you. If you live in Boston, if you live in Denver, just to name a few cities, you are sickened to the core about hearing that the guy that a lot of you in Democrat cities have voted for is literally flooding the zone with people from other countries and stacking them in your city. And this is why they're getting the resources. As I said before, all of this comes from the top. This is why Brandon Johnson and this is why, uh, mayor Johnston in, in Denver. And this is why Eric Adams and all the rest of them have to keep playing this situation with the migrants because it comes directly from Biden. And the thing is he's not even funding and taking care of, you know, the, the mayors and what they need, but it's not even about that because the American citizens aren't getting what they need. This administration is about taking care of foreign nationals, prioritizing foreign nationals in this country and outside of the country. Why would you go out and vote for a, a, a president or a party that prioritize everybody else except you? And definitely as black Americans, they are extremely hostile to black America. The Democrats to make sure everybody else gets something except us. And that's a problem. That's a major problem. And the reason why you've seen a lot of black Americans are talking about, man, you know what? I'm probably gonna go vote for Trump is because they're sick and tired of Biden dropping everybody off. Listen, he's getting 30,000 people in here a month. You go ahead on giving four more years. You will see, you won't even know your country anymore because those people are going to bring their way of life, their way of being, etc. here. The way we live in America and the culture of America is not the same like Cuba. It's not the same like Nicaragua. It's not the same like uh, uh, Haiti. It's not the same like Venezuela. It's not the same. And and these people go want eventually political power, and they go want to push their agendas, etc. Right? Because now they're here. Biden and I know the majority of you did not vote for Biden to be flooding the zone with migrants from all over the world. I know you didn't vote for him for that. That's why I'm not really going to go in like I would if after the election, but you got to understand it's real imperative that Biden got to go It's imperative for your pocketbook that Biden got to go. He, he has to, he needs to go it on home to Delaware and, 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 and go spend time with his wife and his family. That's what he needs to go do because he, he, if you give him another four years, this country going to be done literally. Look at the, the 21% increase in food costs. A lot of Americans are literally crying about they can't afford food. A thing that no American used to even be talking about. Now they could talk about food because they can't afford things because of rent. Now they are jacking up mortgages, everything they're jacking up on American people. And, and I, and I'm going to tell the American people this being single, doing things by yourself is going to be a luxury. You may have to get back to the old days of families working together and families pulling their resources. I know in America, everybody wants to be individualistic. 
You want your own this, your own that. I can't fool with this one. I can't fool with that one. But the time may come. If you, especially vote Biden back in, you're going to be living 10, 12 to a house. Cause nobody gonna be able to afford to stay on their own with this guy. The migrants will have a house where you have one. Homeless people are suffering in this country. That guy don't care. He rather send the money that can end homelessness in America to Ukraine. Now they're talking about him flying Palestinians in here. That's the next step. He's about to start doing that. And he's about to start putting the Palestinians in all these different cities all over America. Right? Who's to say those Palestinians may not be mad at America. They'll come over here, but may not be mad at America because they supported Israel and what happened in their homeland. This man may be importing people that have an ax to grind against America. Like y'all don't realize what this man is doing to this country. You don't realize it. Anybody talking about voting Biden at this point, like I said, you, you are, are, are extremely silly and you really don't care about the country you live in. Listen, some people could maybe say, you know what? Uh, I'm leaving this place, but the majority can't leave like that because they in so much dire economic straits. They can't leave if they wanted to. If you say you care about America, you say you care about your children and all of that. You got to get these Democrats out. These Democrats want to take parental rights away. These Democrats want to push degeneracy on children. And on top of pushing degeneracy, they want to flood the zone with foreign nationals. There's no way anybody that has, I mean, just even an ounce of common sense will say, yes, I want to go put Biden back in office because yes, I guess I want to be paying 40% more in food the next four years. I guess I want to be uh, uh, not having no money come to me at all because the migrants going to get it. You think this guy is going to stop this program? Listen, if this guy get four years, you're like, shoot, I got four more years. So I'm really about to step it up what I'm about to do. Cause I know I'm not going to be able to have a chance to do this again. They have a, they have a plan of what they're doing with those people coming in here, folks. And it's not going to be good for the American people in the end. And I'm talking, especially not good for black America. Any black person at this point talking about going to vote Biden Harris, you need to start questioning them. It's like, bro, what is wrong with you at this point? They don't do nothing for black people. They're stacking our cities full of everybody from all over the world, taking resources from the black community, giving it to them. And, and like, like what, what, what are you talking about? Oh, well, Trump, this is like, man, forget a Trump. Well, what did he, he say? I'm talking about what's happening with us in the community. At least Trump going to get that element out. At least Trump going to stop them programs. He going to stop all that. We can't afford that. Especially as black Americans, we can't afford it. But you still got some people in the black community. Oh, Democrat, Democrat. I'm going to vote Democrat. And you know what? All the people that say you vote Democrat, I hope Biden put a million migrants in your city. I hope he do. I hope he do. Because like I told y'all, if y'all go back out there and put that man back in office and I realize it's, it's legit. He got back in office. You better believe how much I'm gonna ride down on y'all the whole four years. I'm not gonna complain on Biden at all. I am I'm be on y'all. So when y'all complain about the migrants, say, oh, that's what you wanted. You voted for it. So get ready for your look now, even in Denver, they're asking people, if you got an extra room, um, could you put some migrants in your house? That's going to be the next step. The Democrats going to pass a law and force y'all to put migrants in y'all house. That's going to be next. They're not going to do that. This is Democrats. <laughs> they don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in you having a voice. Please. If they believed in that, then they would have put the sanctuary city uh, statue on the ballot in Chicago. They don't believe in that. They are the authoritarian Democrats. That's what they, man, please watch the Democrats going to have them people right in your house. and going to pass law and force y'all too. some of y'all sitting on rent houses. Oh, the government will be like, Oh, you're sitting on a rent house. Oh, put the migrants in there. Huh? No, we, I don't want the migrants in my, you ain't got a choice. You putting them in there. That's going to happen. All the section eight, uh, program houses. Oh, that's gonna go to the migrants. You watch. They will kick y'all off of section eight and they'll give it to the migrants. You watch. Okay. Think I'm just talking crazy. You will see. You will see. Put Biden in there for another four years. And everything I'm talking about, you're going to come right back and say, man, you said that two years ago. You said that a year ago. 
I didn't think you, you was crazy what you were saying, Phil. You know, and the people that came to me and talked to, told me things like this over the years about things I've called out before it happened because I literally see the writing on the wall. But you got a chance to prevent it from happening. But you go, you go put Biden back in there. You, you, you go ahead. And at the same time, let's say if Trump get elected, then you American citizens need to go apply to work for ICE. You need to go work, apply to work for the CBP. Go apply to work for Border Patrol. I've told y'all before, I know someone personally that work on the border, and he said they're hired. So they need help. So instead of complaining about it, some of you good men out there and good women, you know, apply to work for ICE. A lot of black Americans, you know, you can get them jobs too now. You can work for ICE. You, you, you can get enrolled with them. Shoot. I mean, we, our attitudes are totally different today. Yeah, black Americans definitely need to apply for ICE for sure. So when Trump say he's going to do his deportation, well, you right there to help him. 